From the northern shores and woodlands to the west, it's history. From copper mines and iron ore, the Great Lakes fishery. To the farmlands of the southern counties and east to Chesapeake Bay, to get all that waits for sportsmen across the USA. And sometimes when the moon brings out the diamonds in the snow, the stillness of the forest is encased in Arctic cold. The wind might whisper through the trees and listen to his say the beauty of our great outdoors across the USA. Hi there, come on in. I'm Fred Trost inviting you to join me for the next half hour for Outdoor Digest. We have our new Outdoor Digest magazine out with a new rundown of shows for the next two months. Tonight, we are going to combine a charter trip, fishing for lake trout, with the second annual Outdoors Forever Handicapper Awareness Fishing Day. Outdoors Forever is a program that we started here with Outdoor Digest to try to encourage people who have physical disabilities to get out and enjoy the outdoors and not give up. You're going to find that these folks are more pleased with their fishing accomplishments than anybody. So stay tuned. All this coming up, it's time for Outdoor Digest. It's morning in Ascoda, sunrise in this town on the western side of Lake Huron. It's a big day, too, for charter boat skippers and the rest of the community who band together once a year to put together a Handicapper Awareness Day. Helping hands abound to get the handicappers from outdoors forever to boats in search of the big lake trout and salmon. Everyone's wondering where the fish are at. Captain Rich of the Richmark has an idea. At this particular time of the year, you can see the surface temperature right now is 51.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, optimum temperature is right around uh, 52 degrees, 54 degrees for these fish. So they're likely to be anywhere from top to bottom, and we have caught many of them near the surface already. So why are we out this far rather than being closer to shore? Uh, well, the temperature was at the river mouth when we came out, we checked it was 65. That's a little bit too warm mm -hmm. in there. So, And this time of the year, while the season, uh, we should be locating fish out here at this depth anyway, uh, it seems like this spring has been a little slow and the uh, water temperature has stayed a little cooler than normal. So mm -hmm. we've come out and, uh, and try to get them where they should be about this time of the year anyway. Explaining the, the downrigger setup, it's fairly simple. The lure we're running about, oh, I'd say 15 feet behind the downrigger. You see it out there in the water. We're going to clip the lure to what's a, just a regular metal clothespin, isn't it, Al? That's right. Go ahead and clip it in there. Wally release. Okay, now you're gonna clip it for, are you clipping it for lake trout? Yeah, for a lighter hit, we move it out closer to the edge. For like, salmon or a heavier hit, we'd move in and hold it tighter. Okay, well sh show me here how you do it for a lake trout. Try we'd be out close to the edge. Okay, and then when the then when the fish hits the lure, pulls free. Now, are you going to set it for Lakers today? I'm setting it, yeah, light for lake trout. Okay, and close to the edge. And then we take the cannon ball, which is about a five, six pound, ten pound ball. We're going to use, and that's on a wire cable, so that'll drop straight down in the water, and the lure will be behind it, oh, 15, 18 feet. How, how low are you going to take it? Go ahead and run her down there. Got a twist in it there? Okay. Got to make sure that's straight. How deep are we going to run them? Run this down about 80 feet. Captain Al sets the lines, and Richard Connecticus waits for a Laker to hit. Richard suffered from polio. His legs are in braces, but that hasn't stopped his enjoyment of the outdoors. Richard's attitude has no doubt been a key that has kept him from being a bystander and made him instead an active fisherman. Yes, I had complete paralysis neck down. Uh, I had to learn how to use my arms and my legs all over again. And uh, it took some time in the hospital, surgery, uh, wonderful parents, friends, teachers, and everything, or I wouldn't be where I am today. But most of all, it's taken uh, the out of doors to get me back in shape. What's your main difficulty in fishing? Main difficulty I have is with my left arm being able to hold uh, the rod up good enough so I can reel with the right. My left arm is uh, not as good as the right one is, and to try to keep the pull up is the tough part. So I have a little strap here that helps that uh, we shopped around a little bit for. It's normally to carry a flag in parades, but we use it in order to keep the pull up and work with it. Mm -hmm. And I've learned some new technology through Outdoors Forever that I'm going to get to be able to uh, do it even better because this one slides too much. 
and uh, I hope to see a lot more improvement in things so I can go fishing with my family. Well, what does Outdoors Forever mean to you? Outdoors Forever means to me to have everything accessible in the outdoors so that you can do whatever you want, whether it's hunting, fishing, recreation, that you don't have any barriers that would stop you from doing what everybody else does. And so when I say outdoors forever, I believe that staying in the outdoors as much as you can keeps you good and uh, physically strong and a very good positive attitude. So you, you, you regard uh, fishing as part of your exercise and therapy? Yes, and it definitely is this year. Uh, I've had an opportunity through fishing to be able to exercise my arms in a different way than just walking with crutches like I normally do. Uh, the physical strength exercise is great. The fun of landing a fish is, is really something. I watched it from my boyhood, and many times I go fishing and catch nothing. And as a result of a project like this, I've caught more in the last two years than I have in the last 10 or 12. And uh, it, it's all a success, uh, wonderful people. But I need the, the physical exercise, and being in the outdoors and doing fishing is what's going to keep me that way. Richard, Woo. how about that? Hey, now that's great. <laughs> nice little one to bring home. All right. Yeah. Classic of Lake Huron. You might get a prize with that one. And yes, I walk with crutches, but I encounter the same barriers as uh, wheelchair users do and the others. If you have uh, too many steps or you have hills or other things that will stop you from being able to fish, then you have to fish either at other locations or don't. So uh, maybe it looks good like I can get around in crutches and I can still fish, but not all the places where I want. I usually have to take a little cart with me and uh, carry things. It's kind of hard sometimes, like for anybody else. But the main thing is having it so that I can walk to it. If I can walk to it, I can fish. And if I can fish, I can catch one. And if I can catch one, I'm successful. And happy. And happy. <laughs> you bet. Richard Connecticus is both successful and happy with this Handicapper Awareness Day, as is Captain Skip Lewis, one of the organizers who helped put the event together and weighed in the fish. Outdoors Forever board members Don and Judy Basie and Roger McCarvel enjoyed it too, and so did an excited Lila Canuel. How many salmon have you caught in your life? One. One? Just this one today? Just, just this one. Have you been out in a boat like this before? No. Now, did you hang on to it for the whole duration? Let me show you some biceps here. Oh, yeah? Okay. They failed me. They did? <laughs> yes, they did. So, so hubby here helped out. So it was a team effort. It was a team effort. So yes. quite, a, quite a thrill? Yeah, it was a real thrill. I'm hooked. Exciting also for Roger Wessendorf, who is really hooked, too. Fish on, he said, here's the pole <laughs> reel, and I couldn't believe when he started taking line, he just kept going. Kept going, huh? <laughs> Going for the bottom. How long did it take before, before you got it in? Good 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Wow. I, I gotta say it, I'm just so excited. It's <laughs> And what a nice day it was. It was an exciting time at Oscoda for everyone who was there. And a great day for all of us who want to enjoy the outdoors forever. You know, that Outdoors Forever program is something we hope spreads all over the country, that people get the idea that, that if someone is disabled or a senior citizen and can't participate in the outdoors the way they used to, that they shouldn't give up. There's no reason that a person should give up. Sure, you might have to change your tactics, you might have to change equipment and, and tone down the way you go at an outdoor activity, but please don't give up. Enjoy the outdoors forever. In fact, there's a lot of handicappers who can catch big fish to become a part of our trophy book. <laughs> Now look at that crappie. It's a pound and three quarters. Ken Hayes caught it while he was trolling a Hottentot. John Hook has a nice walleye. It's an ounce shy of 12 pounds. He caught it in the middle of the night on a rebel. Chris Miller got this 21 pound, 13 ounce muskie trolling for walleyes. Nice 10 pointer. Bill Brubaker took this white tail with a rifle. Craig Walsh stalked this 14 pointer and shot it with his bow and arrow. And here's a bruiser buck, an 18-pointer Mike Kuzma took with a shotgun. Mark Harris's turkey was 17 and a half pounds, had an almost 9-inch beard. Here's Carl Van Hoof with an almost 8-pound bowfin or dogfish. Now, Carl was catfish fishing and really didn't expect a mean old dogfish, and especially one that had a real reason to be mean. Well, I picked this one up in about a 10-foot hole, but 
I fished the holes for the cats, but he took a sucker about eight or nine inches long. Huh. Kind of weird looking thing as far as the, he had a night crawler harness coming out the rear here and he had about three or four of the uh, uh, walleye rigs inside them, the Lindy rigs. Well, they're, they're dogfish are mean. Well, this one uh, broke the um, steel leader. I had a 30 pound test steel leader and he bit through it just as I got the net under him. <laughs> oh, what a story. Well, Carl Van Hoe, for catching a large dogfish with more hardware in its mouth than a kid with braces, we're going to make you our Outdoor Digest Trophy Angler of the Week. The Sport Fishing Institute has called President Bush's interest in wildlife and fishing genuine and a positive influence on the Department of Interior. In their semi-annual report, they say the president has already made a big difference. The Bureau of Land Management just adopted a very pro-sportsman fisheries plan for public lands. Bob Coots, founder of the Freshwater Fishing Hall of Fame in Hayward, Wisconsin, says it's not true that all the big fish have been caught. The Hall of Fame qualifies up to 300 new records each year. Several have even threatened George Perry's 22-pound, 4-ounce largemouth bass that was caught in 1932. The Florida Marine Commission has introduced a proposal to ban commercial and recreational shrimping in the upper portion of Tampa Bay. The purpose of the rule would be to protect fragile grass beds and juvenile fish in the area known as Old Tampa Bay. Anglers in Tennessee have some new fish warnings to contend with. Twelve lakes, rivers, and streams have been cited as containing contaminants. Now, The good news is that the levels of contaminants are already showing a natural decrease. Hunting accidents in South Carolina will now be treated as criminal negligence, which means mandatory fines and jail sentences will be in order for anyone who does the shooting in hunting accidents. And even in Ireland, fishing is big business. A study shows almost 2,000 full-time jobs and almost $22 million are generated by Irish anglers. There's a side to this week's feature on lake trout and handicap awareness that we couldn't show. There's no real way to capture it on videotape. And that's the absolute fun all of us had fishing. Now, Captain Steve Pazlaski ran a supply boat that kept us hauling fried chicken, potatoes and gravy and jokes. Chuck Kinsman from Bunyantown kept us all in stitches on the radio. And the captain of the boat I was on, Mike Kovacs, well, he took an oath to wear pink shorts. And I mean bright pink shorts if we didn't have a fish in the first hour. Well, we didn't. He put the pink shorts on and immediately we caught a pink salmon. <laughs> now, one of the top skippers in Oscoda, Jim Ranke, never got a chance to fish. He was called upon to escort a camera crew and rescue another boat. Jim never complained about it. In fact, he joked about it. And that was the spirit of this Handicapper Awareness Day. It was fun with a capital F. Now, fun has always been far more important to me than limits, and I'm really glad to see that fun and fishing are alive and well in Oscoda. Hawks are often followed by smaller birds that taunt and swoop at the hawk from behind. Now, why don't hawks fight back against these attacks? Well, because they can't. The large, broad-winged hawks are built for soaring and can't maneuver and turn quickly, the way the smaller birds can. Last year, at this time, the country was plagued with a drought. I mean, there were fish of all types coming to the surface, especially in the southern part of the United States, just gasping for air. Well, this year, we don't have that problem. The fish are out there. If it seems a little hot for you, put on some sunscreen and get outdoors. Maybe try some bass fishing, and here's how you can do it. Well, it's bass is what it is. Okay, you rolling? Okay, fish, there he goes. Okay, what you want? You want to get me straight down on the water. Yeah, bass. A legal largemouth makes the minimum easily. It's caught near Illegal shore in mouth. the woods during the day. But it's not springtime. This bass isn't on a spawning bed. No siree, it's mid July. That's a nice fish, Bob. Look at the pretty color in it. Yeah, look at that. Think that one measures, Wayne? Oh, I think he will. Why don't you look at that measuring board right down there by your board. feet? Yeah, we got to keep him more in here. It's fashionable to talk about the dog days of summer, but they affect the fishermen much more than the fish. Easy. Easy. Look at that, OJ. 
there. He's an easy one. We're going after 13 incher. 13 incher. All right. Look at that. Okay. Not not a great big one. Yeah. Why don't you put him in the live well there, and I'll turn it on for you. Wayne Magdalena is a tournament bass fisherman. Now, he's using one of those plush bass boats with all the comforts, including two live wells for fish. And even though we aren't fishing a tournament, we're fishing for fun, and maybe we'll keep some for food today. The live well helps keep the fish fresh longer, which helps the taste. But where do bass like this come from in the middle of the day in July? Well, you're looking at it. Shallow water, close to shore, a weedy lake, and that's where the bass stay most of the day. The small and medium-sized bass anyway. Some research has shown that the big hogs, the trophy-sized bass, head for deep water as a general rule during the day and cruise the shallows at night. But there are plenty of legal-sized and medium-sized bass that will chase a spinnerbait in shallow water during the day. This is a spinnerbait I'm casting, sometimes called a safety pin type lure because it looks like an open safety pin the way it's constructed. The single hook rides up, making it weedless, and the flashing blade, well, that attracts the fish. Get him out there. Well, oh, there he is. You see him? There he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice. Ooh, nice. Nice fish. Nice fish. Ooh. You want a net? No. 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 He's no, just going to measure. All right. Hey, we run into a school of them? Possibly. He came right out of the lily pads. Right out of the lily pads. Mm -hmm. Even though lily pads are found oh, yeah. in the shallows, some big bass hang under them during the day because it's it shaded, clean? and the water stays it's much it's cooler cool. under the pads. Now, what yeah, kind of blade should you choose for a spinner bait? Wayne likes to be Easy. flexible. Most of the time he goes for Easy. a big willow leaf yeah, single hey, blade. Other time times, well. smaller blades work. But with a snap, he can change them. This had a smaller blade on it. Wayne's going to put a big one. But what that essentially is is a snap swivel on the end of the spinner bait, so you can go ahead and change the baits. There's the blade that was on it uh -huh. compared with the blade that we're going to put on it. We're going to put the, the silver collar or the silver the willow leaf. Hammered, hammered silver. Hammered silver. Just like this, Wayne. Try to put your uh, switch it around. Put your uh, the pointed end of your snap towards the inside. It'll catch more, it'll catch less weeds. Oh no, kidding! Mm -hmm. Like that. Mm -hmm. I'll be that darn. way. This part of this, this is on the outside. This part of your snap swivel. Oh, it'll turn up. And your little. Uh, yeah. Okay. Snap won't catch weeds in it. Casting spinner baits is effective, but they also work well trolled along the weed beds. See how this one is turning in the water? It's slightly bent, a little crooked, which causes it to run erratically. It's not bad for casting, but for trolling, you want to bend it out straight so it runs evenly. That way, you can feel if there's a change in the direction or pattern. It lets you know if you've picked up a weed. A bass likes structure, objects in the water, trees, gravel bars, points, islands. These are the places you want to concentrate on, whether you're trolling or casting. That's really what the bass like most. Oh, nice fish. Bass. Bass. Should have been trolling. Yeah. How do you like that? I've been trolling a spinnerbait all day. Well, let's see if we can get him in here. There's another one. Unhooking that big bladed spinner, Wayne Magdalena once again begins showing the magic touch he has as an angler. Could it be the Dr. Juice he puts on his lures? Well, if it is, I should have just as good a luck if I put some on. However, it's a good bet that I'll have the same experience I usually have when I'm fishing next to Wayne. I use the stuff too, but Wayne catches most of the fish. Now, I can't say positively that the fish scent attractors make a whale of a difference. Wayne seems to think they may help him, but then again, Wayne can catch fish on almost anything. Here's a Zara Spook, a surface plug that takes some practice to use to make it dart back and forth on the surface. Not a real popular bass lure, but one that Wayne can use to charm the bass. This is not a beginner's lure. No, it is not. It, this this will take you years to uh, g give us an example of this. Uh, now he's just had fish swat at this thing half a dozen times today, bass, and they've missed it. But look, the fish look at the haven't been, The fish haven't been super aggressive today. 
midday, midsummer, a surface lure for bass in the shallows? You wouldn't go fishing with that one, would you? Nope. Whoa! Look at that! Look at that! <laughs> that is the darndest thing I've seen, Wayne. That's it. There's not the a Wayne Magdalena <laughs> magic. I swear he could use a fishing lure to pull a on. rabbit out of a hat. Now, he wasn't really expecting to catch a bass for the cameras like that. Most of the fish during the that midday in the summer, you'll find in the weeds, and you'll have to use a lure that can handle the weeds. Number one choice, a spinnerbait for Wayne. You control it, cast it, it'll bump the bottom, or you can even cast it past or right into lily pads, and you won't often get snagged. Now, this is where you'll find bass during the day, under the pads where it's shaded. It's cooler. The bass can lay there comfortably waiting for a frog or minnow to swim close by. Spinnerbaits are easy to use, heavy enough to cast, and the real joy is that they don't get hung up on the weeds very often. And, like I said, weeds are where you'll find most of the fish. Weeds produce oxygen, which attracts fish. Weeds feed a lot of aquatic insects, crustaceans, and minnows, which bigger fish eat. And weeds provide cover. At this time of the year, fish the weeds. That's where you'll find the really big ones. All right. Ooh, we got salad and... Yeah, I think I got a fish in amongst all those weeds there. But golly, you had one on. Yeah, yeah. Still, there. still there. He found the weeds, didn't he? Oh, that's good fish. Good fish, Wayne. Oh, good largemouth. Here, you want to connect? In the thick of the weeds is where Wayne found this one, the biggest of the day, largemouth bass. They're not nearly as affected by these hot, muggy dog days of summer as fishermen have been led to believe. This is a nice bass. It'll measure it out at about 15 and a half inches, weighs a couple of pounds. Real scrappers, that's what bass are known for, their fight. They're a pretty fish and not bad eating depending on the water they come from. They can tend to taste like the water and weeds they live in, but with the right recipes, they can be tasty. And they're always fun to catch because of their feisty battles. Oh man, that's a uh, yeah, nice fish. Two and a half pounds. pounds. Looks like he's got some little bit of discoloring there. Yeah, look, look at look at that. OJ, can you get in tight on that? Probably an old scar. One of those big old pike hit him when he was a youngster. Battle scars from the past. Bass can scar your fishing ego too, but don't give up. You can catch them all summer in the great outdoors. Fish and Cheese Puffs by Bobby Lyons from Prudenville is a winner in our Fish and Wild Game cooking contest. Kathy Beitler, it happens to be, I think, my favorite appetizer. Oh, it's an excellent appetizer. It's got quite a few ingredients in it, but they all go together very well. You've got, of course, your fish, and this is perch, and you Ooh. you could use leftover fish for but this. It's cooked. It's cooked first, and then you just flake it very, very fine. Walleye would be perfect for it. Such a delicate flavor to that fish. Absolutely. And you're going to go ahead and add a whole package of cheese. You could grate it yourself if you want to, and a whole stick of butter, and everybody kind of mm. wonders about that, but it's basically to hold everything together. Quite rich recipe. It is, and then a little bit of mayonnaise, mm. of course, for the very same reason, to hold it together and give it a little bit different taste, and garlic powder rather than salt. Whoa, and people are going to think that, that the taste of the fish is going to be gone. Oh, no, no way. And then you go ahead and mix that very, very well. And put it on your English muffins. And then just go ahead and cut those into quarters or into half if you want a little bit bigger portions. Sure doesn't look like much there, does it? <laughs> no, it doesn't. Not once they're cut. And then sprinkle it with paprika and then just pop them in the oven until the cheese melts. Mm. Well, I happen to know it's great, but will Bob Garner be able to taste the delicate perch through all these ingredients? Well, I can taste, I can taste the perch in here. This isn't, this isn't a recipe, though, that is designed to enhance the flavor of the perch. This is, this is almost a frivolous, fun recipe that you really can enjoy the ingredients in it with the perch and eat it with the hot sauce. Oh, it's good stuff. The hot sauce. Lots Dude, I love the hot sauce. Why don't you have a little appetizer with the hot sauce? <laughs> this is festive food. You know, I mean, it looks good, it tastes good, it's real festive food. Mm. It tastes like crab to me. It does? Mm-hmm, with the ingredients. You know, it's hard to think back on the recipe contest, but 
right now it seems like this should have been first place in the appetizer <laughs> category. Oh man, is this good. It's first place right now. Mm. Watch this, Bob. What do you think of that? <laughs> uh, let's not split them, I'll flip you for the rest of me. <laughs> If that recipe looked good to you, but you didn't catch all the ingredients, no problem. It's in the new... Well, we took a little different approach. Some people might think tonight on our fishing feature, taking handicappers out fishing. But you see, it's simple. Anybody can do it. Please don't let things like physical disabilities become a barrier between you and the great outdoors. Our message we give out every week, get outdoors this weekend if you can. It's a great place to be. See you next week. Coming up next week on Outdoor Digest, we'll show you the story of a walleye fishing trip that turned into a trophy of a lifetime muskie trip. Harry Reinfelder was guiding our crew trolling tiny tads for walleye when the monster hit. You'll see the entire story along with preparing the muskie for mounting and we'll go catfish fishing. Catch a bunch of tasty channel cats. Kathy Beitler will have a great recipe. I'll be back with the outdoor headlines and a commentary. Join us next week for Outdoor Digest right here on public television.